Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about the benefits of Pilates and exercise in midlife women. So my guest today was a former lawyer, Pilates instructor, and now a podcaster. So you are going to want to listen to this episode. If you're a woman over 40 and you are looking to lose weight for the last time, you are in the right spot. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I'm your host. And we all know that we need to move more and eat less, but why don't we do it? I give clients the skill sets they need through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset, because that's the missing piece to all this. So if you've tried a ton of diets and are still looking for the latest and greatest 12 week workout program and still haven't seen results, it's the mindset part that is missing for you. So when you become a client, you will not just learn how to lose a weight, but you're going to learn how to keep it off for life. I hope you will enjoy this podcast. And when you're ready to lose the weight for the last time, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and schedule your strategy session where possibility starts and results begin. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm so excited that you are here because today my special guest, we have something in common. We have Pilates. <laughs> And my guest today is a wife to her high school sweetheart, mom to two amazing young adult daughters. She is also a former lawyer, stay-at-home mom, Pilates instructor, and now a podcaster. She and her co-host Bridget have the podcast Hot Flashes and Cool Topics, which is a podcast for women in midlife and beyond. They talk about changing the negative narrative in midlife and that is perpetuated in the media and society of today. Midlife is the middle and it's time to try new adventures and discoveries. It is not the end of the journey. So welcome Colleen Rosenblum to the podcast. Thank you for, for having me on. So excited to have you on today because um, I love talking about Pilates and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I also have checked out your podcast as well. And I love the banter between you and your co-host and of course your guests that you have on. So could you tell me a little bit about how you arrived at where you are now? Sure. So I, um, as you said, married my high school sweetheart and we both went to law school and I kind of knew, I think early on that law school was not the best choice for me, but I was in it and I was going to finish it. So um, I became a lawyer and practiced law for many years and did what I had to do, but I didn't love it. I never got that passion for it that other people say they have for their career. Like I didn't understand when people would say, I love what I do. I'd be like, hmm, not me. But um, so when I had my first daughter, uh, I stayed home with her and then I had a second daughter and kind of stayed home for a bulk of time. But when the kids were back in school or in school full time, I felt like it was time for me to go back into something. And I really didn't want to go back into the law. And I also, you know, one of the things I thought about at that point is I didn't want my daughter seeing me do something that I didn't love because they're watching, they're watching everything you do. And if they see me in a career where I just have to be in it, but I don't enjoy it, I, I didn't want that to reflect on them. So um, my husband was very supportive and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I could tell you, I didn't want to practice law, but I had no clue what I wanted to do. Sometimes eliminating the things that you don't like are <laughs> just as important as Absolutely. figuring out the things that you do like. <laughs> because it kind of clears your focus, clears yeah. your mind. Um, so on that, that kind of traveling that road, I was 35 and I had really not exercised in my lifetime. I mean, I would little things, but I was not an exercise person. I was more couch potato. So I said, okay, there's a studio that opened up close by. It's got Pilates. They say in one hour, you're done. And I love that idea because I was still helping my husband in his office and I didn't have a lot of time with kids. So I went and took it and it one class, I was just hooked. I really felt I'm not a gym rat. I don't love boot camps. I don't love, don't tell me to do 5,000 lunges across the room, I'll cry. Like it won't happen. Um, I'm only well, laughing because that's how I started my business. <laughs> so we did boot camps. <laughs> Some people are addicted to them. And I have a lot of friends that just, you know, love to take the rope and carry the car across the, and that's great. Oh yeah, we didn't do that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful for the people who love to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I got back in a passion for Pilates. I understood what the intent was. 
I felt like I always felt better when I left than when I walked in, both mentally and physically. Um, and so I started taking classes like an addict. And one of the teachers came up to me one day and said, you need to teach because you're like obsessed. You just <laughs> I like stay after class and ask questions about the spring loads and all that stuff. Right. So um, I went to a school called Power Pilates, which is a national squad in New York. Uh, I And I often say that it was harder than law school because <laughs> at the time I had two kids, a husband, a mortgage. Oh, yeah. It, the classes were an hour away from my home. So it was just a lot of pressure, but I did it very quickly. Most of the time it takes a year, a year and a half. And I did it in nine months. I had 600 practical hours with Power Pilates. And then I started teaching at studios. And what I noticed was that in Pilates, if you've done it before, for anyone listening, we really focus on the form. It's all about your form. It's not about doing a thousand reps. I'd rather see you do eight correctly and hit the muscles that I want you to hit. But teaching 13 or 14 people at a time, it's really hard to see everybody's form and get into everybody's body. So what I did, and I did teach in studios for several years, but what I have found that I enjoyed doing more was teaching uh, privates and duets. Mm -hmm. So I actually opened a studio in my house. Okay. And uh, all, you know, luckily the clients that I had, I had for years, they just came with me. I never had to advertise it or anything. And it was so much of the psychological and the physical combined um, that I just loved it. And so that's what I did up until I moved to Tennessee, up until I had empty nesting, and, but they all came back. Uh -oh. <laughs> I call it revolving door. Uh, I think it's when daughters think come back, I don't know. Um, but yeah, and so we moved to Tennessee. I was in South Florida, we moved to Tennessee and, and started the podcast about a year ago. Oh, that's cool. Um, so now going back to the Pilates. So um, in my younger years, I was a professional ballet dancer and oh. ballet dancers have been using Pilates since the dawn of time. And it's been like this secret little gem that dancers have always used. Um, so actually I've been doing Pilates since 1996, I think. And I still have my first reformer which if you guys don't know, it's um, it's like a sled or a slide on, um, it's like the home version, but I still have that sucker and it's from like 1997. And I'm like- <laughs> It has gone with you to different houses. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. When I was a ballet dancer, I actually moved, like I lived in Annapolis, Maryland for three years and I moved seven times within that time frame, And that's only the small chunk. That's a whole podcast I could probably do on why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you some there was one that like there was a dead body in the dumpster I was oh like my God. get out of here not stay <laughs> you so need to like that. podcast episode just on your travel um, <laughs> well, my mom yeah my mom jokes because she has a you know the old address books that you know mm -hmm. we don't really use but um she says she has an address page like nine pages in pencil of all the places that I've lived. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's like, where are you at now? <laughs> so. up pencil should erase. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she, I don't know. But, um, but so yeah, I've been doing Pilates and actually when I worked as a physical therapist assistant, one of the things that we had to do for school was do basically a dissertation. And I chose Joseph Pilates and his story, which I'm sure you learned when you got certified, is fascinating. I mean, he worked in the um, war and he was rehabbing patients and he was using these contraptions to kind of rehab people without, you know, medicine. And basically it was early physical therapy um, that they had done for the people in the war. And um, he had combined circus training, gymnastics, ballet, and like all these boxing, all these weird, not weird, but like such a- You wouldn't think go together. Yeah, like this big melting pot and created Pilates. Um, and for the listeners out there, if you've never gone to Pilates, um, I know I'm certified in mat Pilates, but there's different like pieces of equipment that you can use right. um, when you go into Pilates. I do like the reformer. Um, I love Matt Pilates too, because you just show up with the mat and you do exactly. your thing. And a lot of people underestimate Matt Pilates. Yeah. Um, they say it's, oh, that's too easy. I'd rather be on the reformer, but you're using your own body weight. You're working with your body weight and if done properly, 
it is a killer workout. I mean, if you yeah. slow the movements down and you really hold the engagement, you got people shaking after a few seconds. So I think it's, I love the machines. I'm more addicted to the machines, but I am certified in both. And I think that, you know, Matt Pilates can get a bum rap sometimes because people think, you know, especially now with a lot of people staying home, it's a great workout. If you can find a really good video or live stream on Pilates mat work and the ab series, that's a great workout for you to do from home. Yeah. I have a reformer and a tower for, for your listeners that are familiar with it. There is Matt Pilates and then there's five pieces of equipment that Joseph Pilates created for, um, you know, you have the reformer, you have the tower, you have the Cadillac, you have the pedipole, you have the chair. So you're using tension springs on those machines. So it's more of a strength training, but on the floor, you're also using your body weight. So that's also strength training, but it's a little more flexibility with the machine because you can add weight and, or tension and lower it. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about the pelvic floor with the Pilates? Because I know that is a huge component with Pilates. And it's really important for midlife women because a lot of women complain of problems with their pelvic floor, that it gets weaker as we get older and there's incontinence and things like that. So with Pilates, every exercise, it doesn't matter. You've got a head to toe workout, but every exercise is focused on engaging your core and the strength of your, your core. And you will work your pelvic floor. You'll work your core muscle. We think shoulder to shoulder, knee to knee. That's where we focus our, our workout on. And different exercises are focused on different areas. So I might have a heavier tension spring on people when I'm doing the leg work. And then I'll kind of make it medium when I'm doing pelvic floor and core engagement. And then upper body, I'll go a little lighter, but it really depends on the person. A lot of people like Pilates because even if they have a pre-existing condition, we can modify. There's always a modification let your instructors know and they should be able to modify it so that you can do an exercise or some type of from similar exercise to engage it. Um, but a lot of women, you know, your gynecologist will say Kegel, Kegel, Kegel. Um, but a lot of women have issues with their pelvic floor and it's a great way to, to strengthen it. And your um, instructor can give you certain floor exercises, even things like bridging and things like that, that'll really strengthen that area. But it's so much about the core with Pilates. And for women, as we get older, our posture, you know, a lot of women can become kyphotic, which just is that curvature of the spine. And Pilates will help with that strong core, strong posture. So it has so many benefits. And it's you're not gonna come out a sweaty mess and feel, you know, yes, you're gonna be sore the next day or the next couple of days, especially in the beginning, because your core muscles do not wanna work. They will do anything to avoid work. So you're going to pull, you know, you're going to try to use your neck muscles because that's where your tension goes, your shoulders, your neck, your lower back, because that is one of the places where people feel it a lot because your core is not strong enough. But after, you know, eight or 10 classes and you start to get the language, you start to understand what we're saying and feeling the, the movement in your body, you're going to start to notice your core really getting stronger and your body feeling stronger. So I think Pilates is fascinating because it's very similar to ballet class. So when you go into ballet class, you have a series of exercises that you do. You know, you do plies, tendus, and you go through this whole list. And it's the same thing with Pilates. And I think there's a level of comfort that women have, especially someone who has not worked out. Um, it's, I think it's nice to come in and kind of know what to expect rather than like going into an aerobics class and it's different every time. And I'm not saying either one is good or bad. It's just, right, right. there's a definite comfort zone for that. I think too, talking about the pelvic floor and one of the good things about Pilates is you are pretty much laying, there are some exercises where you're sitting up, but you're laying, your back is very supported yes. in Pilates. And I also think too, with the pelvic floor teaching that a lot of women don't quite understand or, um, have a sense of where their pelvic floor is and what it feels like to use their pelvic floor. So I do never kegled. They will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just even like understanding how to engage that, that right. lower pelvis. Floor. Well, it's true. A lot of women don't, but if you've had children, a lot of women will, will have problems as they get older. Right. Um, it's just a part of the, again, with the core and that area around the pelvic floor, we don't work that out normally. You don't see a lot of pelvic floor exercises at the gym. You know? mm, that's <laughs> true. Um, people are very focused on the extremities. They think if their legs are strong, if their arms, and that's great. 
but you have to have a strong core as well to support that or you'll end up injuring yourself honestly right. and right. so the focus i mean i've trained i was in south florida so i've trained you know football players to ballet dancers to swimmers to gymnasts and you will literally see a 300 pound football player move the machine across the room doing core exercises because their extremities are so strong they just want to muscle it <laughs> right when i take it out of their ability to use their arms or their leg then all of a sudden their body starts to shake because they're not used to using their core yeah. And in all of the areas you were talking about, whether it be dance, whether it be swimming, whether it be gymnastics, your core strength is so important and something that is really not focused on in, for a lot of trainers. So it's really a compliment to anything that you do, because as we get older, especially your core, you want a strong core. Right. Yeah. And having a strong core helps your back. And a lot of people oh, have a lot of back thing. issues for sure. So that's for sure. And also Pilates, I mean, it is a stretching and strengthening exercise at the same time, which is nice because as we get older, we need to keep our flexibility, um, you know, keep that active and going. And also weight, um, weight bearing exercises. It's great. You know, as we get older, a lot of women will suffer from osteoporosis. You're not regenerating, you know, you have bone loss, you're not regenerating that bone density as much as you should. So Pilates, can not necessarily regenerate it, but can stop the, it can slow it down the process, which is great as well. So let's talk about your podcast. <laughs> so your podcast is- Yes, my podcast. Hot it's flashes called, and yes. cool topics. <laughs> and I can't get anyone to just say it with a straight face. Cause like, <laughs> I don't like think it's, it's good, but that's what we wanted. We came up with that name because we wanted something that was easily recognizable to our demographic, which hot yeah. flashes of course is. And we also wanted something that covered all of the topics of midlife and beyond because women are so multidimensional. We didn't want to just be about menopause, just be about, not that there's anything wrong with doing that, um, empty nesting or pivoting careers or travel. We wanted to cover the gamut. So you just never know what you're gonna get on a particular week with us. But you know, you never know what you're gonna get in life on a particular week either, so it kind of matches. Yeah. Um, we came up with the topic, uh, both my partner Bridget and I are 52, and we were having lunch one day and we noticed that a friend of ours had started a podcast on something totally different. But we were talking about all the topics that have come up as midlifers and kind of the, the bad rap midlife gets. We are not, this is the middle. We are not at the end of our life. You know, women are so afraid to talk about menopause because, oh, you're getting older. No, that just means you're not having kids anymore. And do you want any at 50? I mean, yeah, no. No. <laughs> so we wanted to talk about the freedoms that you earn in midlife and the fact that you still have 30, 40 years. How do you want to live them? How do you want to define those years? Don't look at, constantly look back to, oh, I've raised my kids, I've got, you know, I became CEO, whatever your, whatever your passion was, you can find a new one. There's still many chapters left. And we've just, we started late September of last year, having absolutely no clue how to do a podcast, none whatsoever. Neither one of us are tech savvy, but we press record and we learned everything, which again shows to the listeners, you can be any age and do what you want, as long as you're willing to put the work in. And it's been insane. Like literally, yeah. we've been so surprised and happy and blessed with the listenership and the people we've met and the topics. We learn something every time we talk to somebody, every time. So it's been a blast. We're on all platforms, which I wouldn't have understood what that meant a year ago. <laughs> And we have blogs and we have YouTube channels and we talk about, you know, real life things. Is it hard to make friends after 50 sometimes because you're no longer hanging out with the friends that your kids, parents, right. you know, your kids, friends, parents, right. you know, do you, did your children leave and you look at your husband and be like, who is he? Who are you? I, yeah. Do I even know you? Right. You know, are you having a perimenopausal moment and you want to kill him anyway? Like there's so many, or do you, before the pandemic, do you love traveling? Do you like, do you want to write a book? We had an author that wrote a book in her fifties. We yeah. just, we love listening to stories and learning about women who see it as the middle of their life and they still have a lot of life left to live. Yeah. I love that whole concept because I'm going to be 47 in like a month and the, and I've said this on the podcast many times. So listeners, if you're, <laughs> if you're a true listener, you're going to hear it again. But um, yeah, it's just like, 
you know, I think when I was little, I look back at 40 and my mom at 40 went back to school back back then, which it was not thought of, you know, it wasn't common, I guess, to do. And, um, but I've never really thought of 40 as like, you know, the tipping point, or even 50 is the tipping point where it's like, psh, you know, all downhill. And the people <laughs> that I talk to, I'm like, you're, you, what are you going to do, sit on the couch and wither away and die? Like, I mean, menopause is, is not the end of everything. If anything, I think it's almost like the beginning of something awesome, like you're it's saying. You it's reverse do. puberty. That's all it is. It's just reverse, reverse puberty. puberty. <laughs> <laughs> and really, I mean, it stinks to go through. I'm not going to say that the symptoms don't stink, but you know, you survive it yeah. and you move on just like you do a lot of things. And one of the best things I think that happens in midlife is you stop caring what anyone else thinks. Yes. You don't care. You're willing to try something. If it works great, if it doesn't, no one was paying attention anyway. So. <laughs> and that's a gift. A lot of women struggle with, they call it the invisible woman syndrome. They feel like as they get older. I like become, that term. Well, I don't yeah. like that term, but that's an interesting, you know what I mean? It's one of the things we looked at in the in the beginning, and we still look at it, obviously, but yes, a lot of women feel like as they get older, they become invisible. And for a myriad of reasons, they're no longer the first person looked at in a room. They're, you know, not listened to as much in a corporate setting, you know, and that's something that, yes, is a struggle for some people, but it's also a freedom. Like, there's always going to be somebody younger, skinnier, whatever, by someone else's definition, because right. everybody has right. a different definition of that. Right. But you have the freedom of not caring. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You yeah. fly in, And that's a gift. I mean, for some women, it's harder than others. But if you look at it, it's, it's about retraining the way you look at it. Changing the narrative is what we like to say, mm -hmm. but it really is, okay, what am I going to do with this? This is a superpower. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What can I do? Yeah. I think it's definitely self-reflection too. Like this is the time where you get to decide how you want to look, how you want to dress, how you want to present yourself. And like you're saying, just, you know, you don't care as much. So it's yeah. not so much that you're trying to appease other people. It's that, what do you want to do? What are you crazy about? What are your, what are your passions? You know, and that's not a comfortable feeling for a lot of women because yeah. we have spent the bulk of our life worrying about what's best for the kids, what's best for your husband, what's best for your family. And you still do yeah. that. You will do that until the day you transfer wherever you go. But <laughs> all of a sudden you become a priority and you're, you almost feel selfish. Yeah. Like I'm allowed to make a decision for myself because it's such, but that again is a freedom you have earned. If you don't want to do something, you don't have to say, oh no, but thank you so much. I just have, I, I'm busy. No, no, no right. thank you. <laughs> you don't need a reason anymore. No, thank you. I, I don't I, think you need a reason at all at any age, but, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think yeah. that's, something that's hard to learn when you're younger. I agree with you. But for some reason, it comes easier yeah. <laughs> past a certain age range. I agree. And it's just getting over that guilt and saying, wow, I've earned, I have earned this. Like, this is a time in my life where I have, and I have my kids, they're, they're, I'm an empty nester one day and I have kids at home the next. You never know with me. And I love that, but I still like my time. Like I I've, I've now have a balance. So maybe you just find balance easier in your life, I guess, as you get old. But it is a hard struggle for a lot of women. They don't know what to do. They feel lost. And that's what we try to talk to them about. Baby steps, find something you like to do. It does not have to be rule the world. It can be nice. very, take a dance class, take a Pilates class, something simple, but do it for yourself, not for yeah. anybody else. Uh. 100%. I totally agree. So uh, where you said you're on all the platforms? <laughs> yes. We are on, our website has everything. So if you go on um, hotflashescooltopics.com, hot it has the episodes, it has articles, it has our videos. We do happy hours, um, mm -hmm. has our YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, we have a Facebook group, which we is, is crazy how many women are joining and we just love it because they're so engaged. Um, and then all the podcast platforms every Wednesday, we have a podcast coming out again. You never know what it's going to be about. Um, and then this summertime we're having double because we happen to take a lot in the pandemic. <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're like, we have banked a lot of episodes. So we are doing Wednesdays and Fridays for the summer only. And then we'll go back to every Wednesday for a new episode. And we love, by the way, ideas. If you're a midlife woman 
and there's a topic you want us to cover, hotflashesfulltopics at gmail.com. Let us know. If we don't have the answer, we will find the person who does. Awesome. And if you guys missed any of those links or emails, I will have everything in the show notes. You can go to shapeitupfitness.com. Just look at this episode and you will have all of Colleen's contact information. Hey. No problem. All right. Are you ready for the speed round? I think so. <laughs> okay. So for those who are new to the show, the speed round, basically, I'm just going to ask Colleen some questions and we're just going to See what she comes up with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So question number one, coffee or tea? Tea. Any particular type of tea? Chamomile. Oh, big chamomile. I'm, I'm very allergic to chamomile. <laughs> really? Yes. I'm a big iced tea fan too. So I'm in the South. I, you know, I'm in Tennessee. Oh yeah, Tennessee. I'm yeah. Tennessee. I went to school at Radford. So okay. I, we were not too far. Actually, I think I went skiing in Tennessee one year. <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> it was a long time. It was a long time ago. Um, so I have a story about chamomile tea. I was in Texas last year and I got sick while I was there and it was just me. I was at a conference and um, the hotel who's, I can't think of what it is. I think it's Marriott. I called down to order food and, you know, after you order room service, they're like, can we do anything else for you? And I was like, yeah, you can get rid of this, whatever I caught, you know, jokingly. <laughs> Right. Within five minutes, the girl was upstairs at knocking on my door and she had a spread of like chamomile tea, honey, all this stuff to make me feel better. And I felt so bad because I was like, I'm allergic to chamomile tea. <laughs> <laughs> so she ran downstairs and then came back up with other stuff. And I was like, I will always stay at this hotel. So I'll have so to leave that link. And it's customer service. They were smart. Yes. It was fantastic. I will leave that link to the hotel. It was Plano, Texas, so I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what was your what is your favorite book and why? Oh gosh, Catcher in the Rye. I think because it just was always one that stuck with me. I read it in ninth grade, and it just uh, just something about it just really resonated with me. So I would say Catcher in the Rye. As I get older. Um, anything by Brene Brown, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Daring Greatly, any of that, I love it. Because she talks about how to get over the fear and the vulnerability. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite movie? I have a lot. Um, I love Terms of Endearment and Steel Magnolias, but I'm also a very big Ferris Bueller fan. <laughs> I love Ferris Bueller. <laughs> I'm so dating myself right now. <laughs> okay. All of the, well, pretty much all the listeners are over 40, I'm assuming. So, um, but yeah, Ferris Bueller is a classic. Is and I awesome. think just trivia wise, I think one of the nighttime talk shows live streamed all of the Ferris Bueller actors recently. Had really? Like a union. Yeah. And I can't remember which one it was. I saw it on Facebook. But it was one of the, yes, yeah, so if you look up um, the Ferris Bueller reunion, you will see that they were all on. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of who, I don't remember seeing the girl. I can't remember her name, but I've seen her in a couple other movies, but she didn't. Yeah, she was kind of the one who pinned her on that one. She yeah. yeah. And um, Bueller, I know he did like, <laughs> see, I know, right. it's That's like, I can't even remember his name. Bueller. <laughs> Matthew Broderick, right? Yes. Matthew yeah. Broderick. So he married. Sex in the City. Yes, Sarah thank you. Jessica Sarah Jessica Parker. Right? Brain fog. I have it all the time. The brain fog is real, people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been, um, there will be times when I'm podcasting and I'm like, no clue what I was going to ask you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you have a favorite toy growing up? Oh, anything Barbie. Anything Barbie. You know, that, that, that uh, Barbie airplane. Barbie mini camper, Barbie anything, and, and that the doll that did hair. I swear I was going to be a hairdresser because the big Barbie doll head. Oh, like, that I was a little creepy. Right. Yeah, that was <laughs> like the, the, just the head of the doll. Um, my dad built uh, my sister a dollhouse, um, you know, decent sized dollhouse, and then I'm the younger youngest child. So when I came along, I wanted a Barbie house. This sucker was like four or five feet long, about four feet high and like on wheels. It mm -hmm. was the best 
house. And unfortunately it was kept in the basement for so many years of their house that it got moldy. But I was like, I mean, it was just amazing. When my dad built stuff, he was like, it wasn't like small he went overboard <laughs> for sure, which was awesome. Big, big yeah. ideas. Big. Yeah. But Barbie had a, like, she could drive her little Jeep in the could have rented out something. I could have. I could have lived in there. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite inspirational quote? This too shall pass. It's mm -hmm. a big one. Love that one. <laughs> There's one called not my circus, not my monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of get that one as I get older. Yes. More so than I think I did, but probably, yeah, this too shall pass because it is just so true. <laughs> yeah. And I when think that's a you don't see the end, but. Yeah, and I agree, like right now, I think everything that we're going through, um, for sure, that is definitely a great quote to hold on to. And one tip that the listeners could use from you today. Um, if I could recommend anything for women over 40, it's just give yourself a little grace right now. Your body's changing, think of it as puberty. I mean, honestly, it really is. Your life is changing. If you have kids, you're getting older. If you're in a business, the younger ones are just creeping up behind you constantly. Give yourself a little grace and find some joy. It can be very simple joy. It could be reading a book. It could be taking a dance class. It could be walking out in nature. But find that time for you to just be you and, and be really centered in what you want because you're at an age where you know kind of what you need, your needs are. So make sure they're being met and make sure you are, you know, still challenging yourself, but giving yourself some grace along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Speak up, speak up exactly. for what you, you need and want. Exactly. Because you know what your needs are now yeah. and you're not too, you know, so, you know, when you're younger, you're kind of intimidated. It's not the right word, but you don't want to start like, you don't want to or let it flow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, now, and, and now you also pick and choose. You know, I always felt like I had to, you know, fight every battle for women and, you know, in the law and everything. And I still would do that if I was in it, but you kind of pick and choose your battles because your energy, you want to make sure you put your energy for the right reasons, for the right things. And I don't know about, about some of your listeners or you, I notice immediately negative energy. If someone has negative energy coming near me, I, I just, I can't absorb that. So use your energy wisely, pick and choose what you put that with. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's like, they just, not that I'm into like vibes and stuff, but there's, there's something, <laughs> the there's some sort of, yeah, I'm not too much into the woo, but like, there's something, mm -hmm. um, like somebody described it as like odor, like energy <laughs> odor, <laughs> basically. And you're not aware, like the person who's giving it off isn't aware of it, but everybody else is like, what? And you <laughs> kind of know it. You've ex had enough experience with it. Yeah. Don't let, don't let them throw it at you because some, I like to say some people are energy suckers and as soon mm -hmm. as they walk into a room, they just suck the energy from everybody. Yeah. yeah. So be aware of them and, and protect your energy. If you yeah. Need it, especially. Um, yeah. I heard the term, um, I think it's energy vampires. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it really is true. There are some people that just feed off the energy of everybody else in the room. So they come in and they're like, here I go. And just mm. be aware of it. And if you need to take a step back and just kind of recharge, recharge, it's okay. Put yourself first. It's okay. I guess. Yes. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good bottom line. Yeah. A summary of it all. <laughs> it's okay to put yourself first once in a while. I mean, don't go crazy and ignore everyone, but you know, make yourself a priority. Yeah. And I think at our age, we understand what is selfish and what isn't selfish, at least for most, I think the average woman, yeah, for sure. Well, Colleen, thank you so much for being on. I have really enjoyed our conversation today. Me too. Thank you for having me on as a guest. It was fun. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful week, everybody. And I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.